Hello, everyone, and welcome to a very special edition of the OTTX webinar series, where it is our continued privilege to share with you the experience, insights, and wisdom from the experts and executives that are shaping the OTT and CTV industry. My name is Jose Rodriguez. Thank you for joining us. Today, we are joined by industry experts Nick Mehta, Vice President, Strategy and Operations, Fast Channels, and VOD Sales for BBC Studios, and Mike Sid, Chief Strategy Officer from WIP Media, for a discussion on best practices for fast analytics. BBC Studios has been a leader launching fast channels in the US and around the world, and analytics has played a key role in their success in growing their presence. Today's discussion will center around understanding the common challenges in fast and how analytics can, play, um, can help to overcome them, provide some real world examples of how analytics has helped to fuel success stories for BBC Studios, and uncover some insights into future trends and opportunities in the FAST ecosystem. We encourage you to submit your questions in the Q&A bin and time permitting our presenters will get to them throughout the session. Mike and Nick, thank you so much for joining us today. The floor is all yours. Thanks, Jose. Really appreciate it. Of course, have a great session, guys. All right, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. So, uh, so thanks. Um, as uh, as Jose is saying, uh, this session is uh, kind of going to be a little different than the couple of sessions that you know that I've at least done in the past. This will be a, a practitioner's view. So, my name is Mike Sid. I'm the Chief Strategy Officer for WIP Media, and what we do is uh, we have a set of products that help companies like BBC Studios to uh, to manage content performance tracking. We take data from all sorts of different sources, do all the, look at all the third party reporting, pull it together. And I've done a couple of sessions um, over the last few months about you know the, the complexities of that. But you know, obviously you're pulling the data together for some reason. And the reason obviously is about fast analytics. And rather than you know me uh, telling you about that, I thought that uh, you know what would be great is if we have one of the true uh, masters of the field, uh, Nick Meta. Um, to do that. Um, so that's uh, that's what we've uh, planned on doing today. So Nick, let me uh, just ask you if you wouldn't mind just giving a brief personal intro and uh, let me let let the, the, the crowd know who you are. Great. Thanks so much, Mike. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Nick Mehta. I am the VP of Strategy and Operations on the Fast and VOD sales team at BBC Studios. I've been with the BBC for about a year and a half looking at opportunities to optimize the value of our catalog across platforms, uh, including via fast channels. So I, I, part of my, my remit is overseeing how we leverage performance data to optimize the, the performance and, and, and the reach uh, of our channels. Okay. Terrific. So let's take a little, let's set uh, first up, uh, you know, set the picture here. Let's set the stage a little bit. So, you know, BBC Studios is, uh, you know, Tell us a little bit about B what BBC Studios is doing in FAST, where it's deploying its FAST channels, um, you know, why, why it's doing it, and what is it, uh, you know, kind of getting out of that? Is this strategic? Is it a yep. business in its own right? What, what, what? Why fast for BBC? Sure. Um, right. Uh, so we're up to 15 unique channel propositions in the U.S. and Canada, um, and uh, we are on 13 platforms um, domestically um, and, uh, and counting. We really look at FAST um, as one way to monetize our catalog. Um, I, the reason that we're, we're set up as the FAST and VOD sales team is FAST is just one mechanism that, you know, that where we can mine our catalog and, and, and make sure that we're extracting the most values. And of course, the platforms that we work with have multiple uh, offerings. They've got FAST, they've got VOD. Um, they have their own fast channels that we, of course, license content to. So, uh, yeah, it, it all, of course, uh, goes back to what are we doing that makes the most sense for for the content that brings the most value, and how are we looking at performance data to to structure that? So, um, specifically drilling down into our fast channels, we we do have three general buckets uh, of channels, um, starting with single IP channels. So we've got uh, a top gear channel. We have uh, a classic Doctor Who channel, an Antiques Roadshow channel, um, and you know, despite a finite number of episodes that exist for for some of these series, we are uh, able to avoid just uh, you know the zombie channel experience through a fantastic programming team that works really closely with um, our our platform partners and looks at you know uh, stunts that we can do with with uh, the programming 
like some, you know, creative marathoning um, to really uh, make sure that we are doing what makes the most sense for, for the audience. Um, and uh, the next bucket, uh, we have our, our mixed series channels or our genre channels. So we have a BBC Earth channel, a BBC uh, Food channel, Home and Garden. Um, these are, you know, mixed series, but we do, of course, you know, uh, look at different ways that we can do programming stunts around, around the content on it and really, you know, look at what what's working on a brand level, um, what resonates with the audience and programming around that. Um, and then the last bucket um, is our, our D2C support. So we, we have a, a BritBox Mysteries channel. Um, mm -hmm. And as part of uh, BBC Studios, we also, uh, uh, BritBox is now wholly owned by, by BBC Studios. So it's looking at ways that we can, uh, you know, support our entire D2C offering um, with, with Fast. Right. And all these channels, I mean, you uh, is, is um, you know, the Fast team, the BC Studios Fast team, are you guys, you know, taking a, a feed of the existing sort of linear channels or are you just programming everything, you know, completely anew? Completely anew. These are all, uh, you know, managed by our, our, our team, um, uh, our, our dedicated scheduling team. And uh, yeah, of course, some of these brands, like I mentioned, BBC Earth in, in, in different countries, that that is a, a proper linear channel, broadcast right. channel. Um, but we, while of course there is some content overlap, uh, it's it's dedicated and programmed specifically for uh, what what would work best in in the U.S. market. Yeah. Okay. Well, fantastic. So I guess that gets us to you know kind of the core of our uh, of our questions here and about analytics and you know just sort of uh, I mean just taking a kind of uh, you know in general you know I mean uh, obviously uh, the answer to this is yes but uh, how you know kind of at a high level what areas you know within you know within you is it content acquisition is it um, you know, is it uh, programming, increasing viewership, you know, kind of retention of viewers? Where does analytics sit in this? Where does analytics, where is analytics the tool uh, for doing that? Sure. Uh, I mean, of course, everything that you just mentioned is, is part of that. Um, I, I will say the way that we think about it is it, it informs our programming strategy. Of course, we're looking at what's working. Um, you know, we have launched channels based on what performed uh, and really stood out on uh, on a mix mixed series channel. Um, we have uh, a, 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 one of the first dual IP channels, actually, Silent Witness and New Tricks. Um, it has Silent Witness um, in the e in the evening and uh, the series New Tricks during the day, and that is based on how well those channels performed on on our BritBox Mysteries channel, for example. Oh. Yeah, so uh, so it informs our programming strategy. It also informs our promotional strategy, looking at what Kind of stunts work what kind of placement what kind of um you know uh marketing assets that we put towards certain uh certain programming stunts what actually moves the needle so that's another you know piece of, of the analytics that we look at and then i would say it also informs our distribution strategy um it seeing what works on a con on a sorry on a platform level um is so important for us and important for our platform partners to understand their audience to understand what works for them you know um not all of our channels are distributed on all 13 uh, partners that we currently work with. And it's based on, you know, what we know is working with, with their, with their um, audience. So, and we, what we can do in terms of also tailoring certain feeds to specific, um, specific platforms. Oh, so you will have potentially like a, for a given channel, uh, you may have like, uh, you know, BBC Earth, for example, I mean, not necessarily that one, you sure. may have a slightly different uh, schedule. Yes. Yeah, we, we've, we've started doing that. And that's, again, based on on the data that we've seen back and something that mm -hmm. we are, um, you know, continuing to explore. OK, that's great. So let's uh, drill down kind of a, a little bit more into into some detail here. Yeah, as you met, as you were just mentioning, I mean, a lot of this is about, you know, uh, programming platform by platform, figuring that out. The one uh, measure that one metric that's uh, pretty much the only common metric that's available right. unfortunately uh, for consumption across platforms is uh is hours of viewing or minutes of viewing whatever you want to say you know just true minutes hours of viewing of consumption of viewing um how i mean given that that's you know sort of the one metric that's apples to apples everywhere um you know because you have other things like views which aren't apples to apples um you know, unique viewers which are not necessarily apples to apples but hours of viewing is hours of viewing how exactly do you use hours of viewing, you know, to 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 do your analysis and to drive your analytics? And, you know, where do things like time granularity and stuff like that work into it? 
Sure. Yeah. At, at a very broad level, that is the standard metrics that, that we have. Um, and again, it, it's standard at, at a channel level. So in some cases, we do have that data on a on a title level, depending on, on the feed. But uh, just looking at the channel level, it, it's something that uh, everything that, that, that I've just mentioned, uh, how, you know, performance metrics inform, um, you know, our distribution strategy. It's something that we look at to see, okay, this, you know, channel is working better on, on this plat platform versus the other. What does that tell us about the audience that's on that platform? What does it tell us about, um, you know, what kind of uh, priorities our platform partners have that we could be leaning into? Um, and, and yeah, again, informing what what makes sense to 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 roll out as we you know explore um, increased distribution for for the content, um, and then when it comes to uh, the more granular um, uh, you know metrics, again, not it's not standardized. That's something that uh, we all know is uh, you know part of the industry right now is you know the the lack of standardization in terms of metrics. But we really do look at anything that can speak to engagement. Um, so you know, beyond HOV when it comes to things like, uh, you know, session duration, unique mm -hmm. users, um, and, you know, drilling into the viewing time per user, that's really helpful at, at a title level. Um, so uh, because that, um, you know, informs new channels that we could be launching based on what we're seeing is performing, that informs our programming and scheduling strategy, um, seeing what works, uh, you know, at different times of the day. Um, and that uh, also informs, uh, you know, what kinds of uh, promotions we should be leaning into. And is that how you're able to determine things like, um, like you were mentioning before, uh, you know, with your sort of dual IP channel that you that came about from some data from uh, from BritBox Mysteries? Were you looking at BritBox Mysteries, um, you know, uh, performance at a, at a title level, just at a day level based on the schedule and all of that? So yep. did you get this conclusion from one platform, from multiple platforms? It's, yeah, from multiple platforms. It, it's something that, uh, of course, it's a mix of an art and a science. We, we know that there are certain just consumer preferences that, that and, you know, brand recognition plays uh, a, a big uh, part in, in it as well. So um, it, it's certainly an exacting process, especially, you know, really being clear on the nuances in the metrics themselves that we get mm -hmm. from different platforms. They're not apples to apples. Um, so when we look at things like unique sessions, stream starts, we in session duration, we're very clear on, on how it's measured. So that can inform, um, you know, what what makes sense to, to you know, explore as a, a single or dual in that, that case, uh, IP channel. Oh, let's talk a little bit about that notion, because uh, obviously, like, you know, there, you know, there's relatively limited data, you know, you're kind of intuiting a lot of things from it, but you can, you know, take it a little further for some platforms to provide, you know, kind of better data. Where is that balance between letting yourself be sort of driven uh, by the data and then, you know, the, the if you will, the curation, you know, the human curation, the, the, the programming notion, you know, how do you balance that or where does that, where does that fall? What, you have some thoughts on that? Yeah, um, I mean, I will say that because our relationships with our platform partners is so important, we also are so in tune to what they're doing on their platforms in terms of what kind of content matters to them, what their marketing calendars are, what they're planning to feature. Um, so that always is, uh, it's something that we have to consider, you know, against just the the hard data that comes back because, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I think everything uh, that we see it, it's it's informative. Nothing's an absolute in the data that that comes back. You can't just you know uh, predict the future trend just based on what you've seen in the past. So it's for sure something that we uh, consider. And I would say that um, because of uh, you know we have such a rich catalog, such a diverse catalog, um, we we really do uh, value you know that the relationship aspect and understanding what works, um, what is working and what our partners are, are are looking to do as well. So it's something that we look at holistically um, with, you know, each each data set being important and, and, you know, informing our decisions, but it's never an absolute in that sense. So when you have like, a, you know, a, let's talk a little bit about, you know, sort of differences between partners, between services, you know, for the same, relatively the same content, same channel, let's say, you know, when you see that there are some differences and we can get into in a minute into, you know, how you would know there are differences, but what actions can the platforms, the services take? I mean, how do you work? How do you make it better, right? How do you how do you solve this? One thing to know, but it's another thing to fix, right? Right, and and I think it just goes back to um, the fact that uh, 
we work so closely with our platform partners. It, it, it's all, uh, you know, in our, in our, we're very clear and specific on, on the data that we're seeing and, and understanding what their take is on it and understanding like what their expectations are. And of course, what we can do to coordinate. I, I would say, um, you know, just taking a step uh, back, it, it's like, there's the analytics piece, there's the understanding, scraping, consolidating all the data and, and seeing what we can glean from it. But at the end of the day, it's such a, uh, we can't lose sight of the fact that it is a, uh, it's a qualitative industry as well. It, you know, consumer behaviors change. Um, some content just will, will have such great recognition and traction and, and stickiness. Um, and that's also something that we just have to make sure that we're uh, being as clear and, and as uh, collaborative, you know, with, with our platform partners around. Let's talk a little bit uh, more about sort of what some of those comparative metrics are then. I mean, clearly all the platforms are providing you with hours of viewing. And then, you know, some platforms are giving you unique viewers, some are giving you views and all of that. How do you normalize? What do you look, what kind of normalized metrics do you look at to be able to compare it? Because clearly, you know, if you've got platform A that has, you know, reach of 100 million, platform B has reach of 50 million, you know, the hours of viewing are going to be different, right? I mean, right, exactly. And and we do definitely standardize, um, you know, based on the distribution of our of our channels. Um, for example, Top Gear, it's one of our most widely distributed channels. Right. Um, and comparing that to a, a channel that we launched last year, BBC Earth, which had a steady rollout. But, you know, when it first launched, it was on two to three, four platforms. And now, it, now it's almost as widely distributed as, as Top Gear. But... It's not apples to apples, and and when right. we're just looking at an HOV rollup, we certainly are looking at at it at a uh, at a you know uh, standardizing by the, the the number of platforms it's on. Ah, so, I see. So so for example, like if uh, you know Top Gear was doing, you know Top Top Gear on platform A versus platform B was fifty percent, and it was only twenty five percent with you know with with uh, BBC Earth. Right. Yeah, and, you, and, and, and that and would I, be a signal, of course. Yes, exactly. And I will say, of course, we look at those roll, rolled up metrics, but just going back to uh, how important it is to understand, you know, that every platform has a different audience, everything should be tailored for that for that audience. Um, we also just look at a, you know, weekly snapshot of just on a per platform uh, basis, how are our channels doing relatively to each other. So mm -hmm. it's not something that uh, yeah, we, we of course look at this, these rolled up stats, but again, just going back to the fact that it is so, uh, everything does need to be tailored to our platform partners. That's what we really do drill, drill down to and also to avoid things getting skewed based on, you know, how much something is is distributed. Are you going down, I mean, like looking at time, of course, because hours of viewing, you can take down by time as well. You're looking at sort of differences between um, certain performance and day parts. Uh, from yep. a given channel from one platform to what does that tell you? Well, well that's the thing. That's something that uh, isn't as standardized. Uh, we don't get that data <laughs> um, right. uh, consistently. But um, I mean, it certainly has shown what, you know, what trends are, what content is working at what time. Um, I think one of the things that we like to talk about um, on our team is it's great, you know, having audience data, demo data when when we can have it, if, if we can. Um, but we recognize that fast really caters to different mood states that, you know, the, the same within the same household, different viewers can be watching, uh, you know, different fast channels just based on what they're feeling up to in that moment. You know, it, it, just, it caters to the, the lean back experience. It, it caters to things that, you know, have that brand recognition, which um, can always just be, you know, uh, put into a, a neat demographic box. And, and that's why we recognize that, you know, day parting data can help feed into that, seeing like what works at different times of the day based on, you know, what we can expect the audience is, is doing, you know, at, at that time. Oh, sounds good. So, and in terms of like, like you said, I mean, like, I think we had, we had a chat about this, about, you know, is demographics important, you know, traditional demographics, uh, you know, age, gender, you know, how, how important uh, is that? But, I guess it's the feeling. So can you, can you elaborate on that as well? I mean, because obviously, traditionally, like in, in broadcast television, I mean, that's been the, the heart of everything, you know, for, you know, forever. It's what advertisers obviously look for. And they really want to understand sort of age, gender performance. So is that is that something that's, you know, sort of uh, changed with fast? Or is that something that's also changed in general on traditional yeah. linear and all of that? What's What can you tell us about that? 
Yeah, well, I mean, uh, to what we were saying earlier, there uh, is limited demographic uh, information. Don't just have it. Yeah. The nature of the fact that it's, you know, free over the top. Anyone can jump in. You don't always need to have a, a login or sign up. So um, I, I think, you know, what that shows and <coughs> thing, it's inter I mean, it's a uh, it's been such an important metric, of course, in, in pay TV, linear, traditional broadcasting. Um, but I think just going back to the point around, you know, that would also would measure uh, on a household level, but in this digitally distributed environment, we we look to drill down to the viewer, right? Uh, because that viewer uh, might not fit what else is, you know, uh, being watched in in that household. And the fact that there are multiple people in the same household, you know, that could be watching different channels, um, I think is just telling about how we we are looking to get to a place to to really drill down into that rather than just measuring by households in a, you know, mm -hmm. as it has been tr more traditional. And then, so this mood state that people are in, I mean, how would you intuit it? Would you be by, based on what their, what channels a particular viewer is using or, or the sets of channels they're doing? I mean, how would you, you know, how, how would you know, right? You know, what that mood state hey, That's is a great right? question. And, and I think it's something that, you know, there's only, you know, uh, with uh, the limited login and then limited, you know, uh, data that you get back, there's a lot of, you know, inference also, again, based on day parting, what's working at, at what time. Um, mm -hmm. But that is something that uh, I think we just recognize that it's something that we have to be aware of and and and, and cater to. Let's talk a little bit about sort of differences, uh, you know, from country to country. I mean, I know that you you manage uh, U.S. and Canada, correct? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, our, I mean, but obviously you hear from your colleagues about the yeah. performance of these uh, similar, same or similar properties, you know, in uh, internationally on the world round since BBC fast channels are around the world, not just the US yes. Canada, but uh, so, but, but just between US and Canada, what kind of differences, you know, do you see, you know, where you have a lot of the same platforms? Sure, <laughs> I mean, um, I can definitely speak to US and Canada and also just how we, you know, manage it globally. But even within, uh, you know, the North American territories, we we know that uh, certain certain genres within British content, uh, you know, are, are are more popular in Canada. Um, you know, we there are certain uh, genres and, and certain brands that, you know, just have different uh, recognition. And I, and I actually would say that that every every country has that has certain affinities has certain uh, uh certain brands that do stick out um do have more of a you know history with audiences and what's fortunate is that you know because the bbc and and its content has had a global presence for so many years it just all goes back to our content sales strategy um you know fast channels are again just a one way of of monetizing our our, our and you know increasing the value of our catalog um and our, our, you know, local sales teams, they know what content, you know, beyond just like a rights availability uh, piece, like they know what content uh, works, what content would make sense for the fast channel experience. Um, and that's something that we are considering um, and something that it's interesting, like we have, um, you know, some overlap in brands. We have uh, Top Gear, you know, we've international versions of it, but it's not the same content that will be on a Top Gear channel in the U.S. versus a Top your channel in in Mina or a top gear channel across EMEA um because of just the recognition in different series um within that within that brand. Oh okay so you'll choose episodes that maybe it happened in that country or something like yeah, that. Yeah exactly or, or uh yeah it's in certain or personalities. Region. Yeah exactly and I guess also of course for our, our uh you know uh, we've got a, a food channel um across the world and there are certain food series and food brands that uh based on the local market based on the on the history based on the audience in that market we know works better um and that's what you know we tailor against as well and then does analytics come into that sort of tailoring is that something that or is it you know more just sort of editorially driven you just know that there's differences it's definitely of course the editorial piece um as just mentioned but uh yeah i mean we're looking at at analytics of course that come in and, and we also recognize that you know fast is at different stages in different markets and uh we, we have a really strong presence across EMEA. Um, you know, we're now coming on board in, in other territories in APAC, Australia, New Zealand. And uh, it's something that, you know, we are, of course, very aware of that not the markets are not the same. There are different expectations or, and that's what uh, we, we look at, of course, when it comes, when the data comes back. Oh, I think you're on mute. 
You're right. I just wanted to let the uh, audience know that, uh, you know, we will, uh, we're happy to take questions. So if you have any questions, uh, please put them into the, uh, just hit the Q and A button there, and then you can, uh, you can submit a question. So, you know, if uh, uh, right now we don't have any, so uh, please, uh, you know, feel free to put some questions in and uh, in a few minutes, if there are some, I'll stop and, uh, and, and take those questions and put them to, you know, to Nick or, if you have one for me, have for me, for for me as well. So, kind of going on to you know onto this, I one of the things that I've been a bit uh, uh, curious about, and we'll take a little segue here, is um, and uh, that I didn't prepare you for, is uh, you know, so obviously you look after fast, of course, but you also look after Ava, uh, you know, so the, and there is a, a, a you know reasonably decent amount of Ava consumption, uh, you know, of your content sometimes on those on those very same platforms because they. They all offer a combination of AVOD and uh, and FAST, and you you know you sell licenses for for AVOD as well. How do you? I mean, how does the do the AVOD analytics come into this? Do they and do the answers that you get do they tend to align with your FAST analytics, or do you do much analytics on the AVOD side? We do, but it, it is not apples to apples. Just in terms of the you know the level of, of data, it's um, it is something that. Uh, we consider AVOD uh, again as one of a few uh, exploitation models within VOD itself. You know, we it's we are also, of course, looking at SVOD licensing, um, and it's something that we very much consider. And it's, it's a consideration when it comes to um, I will also say just you know on how it impacts our T VOD slash EST uh, sure. business. We of course are looking at windows and how our windowing strategy you know um, is is impacted um, based on on expectations based on uh what's what's coming back mm -hmm. and uh oh actually we do have to start some some questions uh coming in but uh which is good so i'll let those build up a little bit and then we'll come to those questions in a minute but just sort of finishing uh you know kind of uh, on the avod side i'm assuming that the you know the does does it help to you know, like the BritBox Mysteries example you were giving earlier, if you're trying to understand sort of content affinity, does it help for things like that? Or does it really not relate back as much to the fast programming? Sure, uh, that's a great question. It 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 definitely, you know, it does. But I will say that platforms are, are different, you know, in certain platforms that lean more into the fast space that have um, an audience that, you know, comes to them primarily for fast that, not might not necessarily be the same, you know, uh, as as one that has operated in in the opposite way, and um, we we certainly are uh, always looking to support our fast channels with uh, you know packages of VOD that are complementary. Um, it's mm -hmm. something that you know is um, what we're hearing is, is becoming increasingly more important, and um, something that we uh, when we look at um, also the data that comes back on fast. Uh, how it can inform our our VOD, you know, licensing and and what we should be putting in in packages. Um, I will say that you know certain uh, brands we have found uh, do work on on fast, but might not work on VOD. Um, mm -hmm. I think it just comes back to the the lean back experience and and the recognition of of that brand. But um, it, it is something that we we play with, and and it's very it's informative. It, it's like VOD is informed what you know we would program on fast and to to you know great results and and vice versa so it is something that we again look at holistically but with the understanding that the platform matters where you know the content lives where it sits um that of course it is a factor in all this yeah i will actually uh let's let's turn to some questions now because we're starting to actually have one question very uh relevant to this fascinating uh, discussion, which is from Anonymous. Uh, do you see similar, uh, says the question is, do you see similar fast and AVOD content support each other on the same platforms or does it, uh, you know, become uh, repetitive? And I guess that's part of your programming strategy as well. And you were talking a little bit about that uh, just, a, just a moment ago, but it, does it, I mean, does it support each other? Do people like watch the same things and all of that? Yeah, um, it, it, again, depends on the platform, but generally speaking, uh, we we look to you know we have more uh, episodes within a series that we can push on on VOD um, that might not necessarily be programmed on the on the fast channel, but we recognize that you know if we're doing a, a marathon of something on the fast channel, we 
are increasing the brand awareness. They were reaching audiences that would, you know, have an affinity to that brand and and ensuring that they can get more. And uh, that that's something that we we consider. So there's certainly um, it's not like a one to one, but we 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 d definitely look at complementary um, packages um, of VOD that go with. Yeah, that. and I'll ask one yeah. side question onto that because you know UIs are very different. You know between not very different, but there are differences in UIs. You know between the different services right. and some services. Um, you know like Pluto, for example. You know, will you know where there's an AVOD you know that exists, an AVOD right that exists you right know, in the EPG. Yeah, you can click on it, start over, and you can get and you know there's an easier navigation to see more episodes of that sort of thing. Does right. That, do you see impact from that? Whether there's something in the EPG to support it, or is it hard to tell? I mean, I, I will say it. The UI of the platform is is so important, and how they are featuring uh, the content. Um, and again, it all goes back to the platform. Uh, you know, uh, management that, that we do and uh, ensuring that we are uh, understanding how our content is featured, where it can be accessed, because of course, yeah, that definitely does impact. And and I think we were talking about certain, you know, uh, certain metrics that would be, you know, great to ha have more access to. I think just understanding the user journey, um, you know, we see watch time, we see dur duration um, on our channels in, in mm -hmm. most cases, but uh, recognizing, you know, how it fits into an audience's or user's, you know, entire journey through the platform is so important because of, of what we just mentioned, like how, how do different parts and especially different, you know, uh, you know, expectation types, how do they get surfaced, um, right. single platform is, is so, is so important and impacts, um, retention and impacts, um, you know, audience, uh, engagement. Right. So if you could know that somebody was watching like, um, you know, the, uh, you know, a, a one of your one of your single IP channels, and want to see went there to do a start over or, yep. or see more episodes or watch that. And you knew that was the same viewer. I mean, that obviously yeah. will be massive. And, and and certain platforms, you know, have uh, I know there there are ways that you know, like like you mentioned about the the Pluto example, direct attribution, and and there's uh you know stuff we can glean from that. I know it's always evolving. You know, platforms are always looking at different ways to to uh, uh you know update their UI or, or, you know, find ways to, to ensure that they are, you know, maximizing retention and, and what we we're partners in that and, you know, showing what brands that we know are sticky and that could help with, you know, understanding that user journey. Okay. All right. Let me share some questions from the uh, audience. So uh, another uh, person's asked, curious if you can share how you think about engagement, length of view versus total minutes viewed when measuring success, particularly across different day parts. Yeah, I mean, we definitely uh, look at session duration. Um, that that is so important. We we know, especially with new launches. Um, you know, we we're constantly launching channels. Uh, you know, with net new channels with net with new platforms, but we're also with you know existing partners, uh, launching uh, new channels with them. So recognizing, uh, you know, if it something brings an audience member in, a user in. We have to see how long they're actually staying with us, and and that is, um, thankfully, uh, a one of the more uh, um, consistent metrics that we get, and uh, something that we we do definitely look at. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, let's see. Oh, I have a very uh, interesting question here, um, which I'm not sure you can answer, but I will I will ask it. Um, what si the question is? What size team is needed to oh. handle analytics, programming, scheduling for say fifteen channels? especially if particular channels will be adjusted for specific platforms. Is this yeah. like five people, is it 10 people? How many people <laughs> are required for this sort of thing? That's right? a great question. I will say, um, and I'm hesitant to give an answer and it's not a cop out. I'm just hesitant to give an answer because <laughs> the types of channels are are, are built differently, right? Um, like it, we're looking at 15 plus channels, but it's a mix of single series channels. It's a mix of, of uh, you know, genre, multi-series channels. Um, we 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 definitely look at what's best for the channel and and uh, there are different tools out there to help with the process, but we put such an emphasis on the human curation. We we recognize how important that is because it's also so important with the uh, with the platform partners because the you know the curators of our channel, they're the ones that know what's coming up, what's front and center and and you know what our our platform partners should be aware of when it comes to their, marketing priorities when it comes to their, you know, their scheduling um, priorities. So um, it is, 
it, it's it's going to vary, but um, we we see so much value in in that uh, piece and having that that curation because it is also goes back to the relationship with the platforms. Well, that's a, a related question. Then we actually just had a related question come in. But my related, related question is, you know, I, I, you have a mix, obviously, you know, single or limited IP, whatever, <laughs> double, single or double IP type channels, as well as genre channels, where you know it can be from any any number of uh, uh, of uh, series and all of that. Is the it is it a greater effort, right? I mean, is it more you know kind of work to manage your single IP channels, or is it or the genre channels present you know more of a, a challenge? Sure, I, I would say uh, it it will vary. Generally speaking, just because of how diverse our catalog is uh, and the options that we have within the within the genre channels, the multi series channels, there is that aspect of uh, you know, in addition to just seeing what works at what time and and catering to uh, a potential uh, you know uh, promotional or uh, programming stunt on a on a, a single series channel, we have to look at our entire catalog. So the the multi-series channels will definitely take more time and investment, but I don't want to diminish the, the work that does go into scheduling a single series channel. Um, like for example, Top Gear has, you know, 25 plus series that are available. So there is still work understanding yeah. what works at what time yeah. and, and, you know, and how to flow, right? How to go are, from one to the other. Exactly, yeah. Um, because you know, especially some of these series that, that are long running, some of them are from the '90s, and some of them yeah. are are from you know last year. So, and uh, some of different presenters and exactly uh, drivers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, let's see, okay. The uh, oh, as we're on the content curation, I do have a obligatory question from the audience about uh, since we it is uh, 2024. <laughs> How are you accounting for AI content curation? Sure. Um, everybody asks, right? Yep. Yeah, I mean, I, I will say working in fast channels, working in a business development role uh, at BBC Studios, it's it's great that, you know, we are at the forefront. We can look at and explore these kinds of tools. Um, everything that we do explore is just part of the BBC Studios uh, and uh, the greater BBC approach to to AI. So um, it is something, of course, that, that we do look at and it's just part of our, um, you know, corporate um, uh, policy when it comes to that kind of thing. Okay. Thank you. All right. So um, let's see. Well, I'll give you a little break because actually I do have a question uh, about uh, to me. Uh, <laughs> so let's see. It's interesting to have a point of view of the provider of content regarding fast platforms, hard from perspective as platform gathering and broadcasting content from different providers. How can web media help me in collecting and processing data from VOD and fast channels and then to be able to build and share the royalties reports? And this did not come from somebody at web media, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> to be clear, um, you know, so let's go into our commercial break right now. And, uh, <laughs> so what, what Web Media does is we have a product called uh, Fast Track. And uh, Fast Track is our content performance tracking product. Essentially, what we will do um, is our product is it goes out and retrieves the data from the various um, from the various uh, platforms, from their portals. Uh, if data is emailed in, it, it pulls it in. We do all this in an automated fashion. And then we standardize and normalize that data, meaning both in, in terms of, uh, you know, making sure that it's all you know, going to at least as common a metric as we can, you know, so that uh, everything is represented apples to, to apples to the best degree, as well as deriving some additional metrics, especially on the revenue side and the, uh, the advertising side, and then presenting this in a couple of ways. One is in terms of dashboards and reporting for analytics so that you're Team can focus not so much on getting all the data together, but actually using the data as, as uh, you know, as uh, as Nick and his team are doing. Um, and as well, uh, answering your question, we you can that flow that data um, into both um, our financial on the revenue side into you know either managing your revenue and posting it, which actually the BBC does with us, um, or uh, paying out uh, you know folks that um, that uh, that you need to pay for royalties, and that's all automated. Folks like Vizio and Cineverse do with us. So yeah, so we have a you know full set of things like that. You know, please reach out to me if uh, you'd like to see a dem uh, demonstration of that. And uh, now we can come back to regular schedule programming <laughs> after that. So let's talk a little bit about. And by the way, everybody, thank you uh, for all of these questions. Uh, you know, that's uh, that that they're they're great. Oh, let's I've got I got a couple more actually um, for Nick. What is for you a successful completion rate value for fast i guess is that measured on a 
like a series level or a I guess you can, I mean, think of it how I, I, I it would have to be at a, uh, a title level, right? It's because you'd have to be at a, it would have right. to be a completion at a title and then perhaps rolled up to uh, to a series level. So let's just assume that, you know, for each title within sort of a, a, a series. So each video, a unique video within the fast channel within the series. I know that that data isn't provided by a lot, that, by terrible. Yeah, that, that one's a little tough to, to speak to. I mean, I will say 100% is our successful <laughs> um it's not something that that is is so standardized um that we get but um but taking a step back uh the session durations we've we we do see you know uh i think some seasonality in that we do see some uh, uh it flows uh, up and down but it's something that um we do uh, look at to inform uh what works on uh on a title level right um so actually coming on to that let's take a look talking about metrics a little bit i think uh, one thing that you know we had chatted about a little before is uh so what kind of you know metrics are you finding it hard to get that would be if you could get them i, I think you've mentioned like uh you know uh, uh, viewing time and, and session time and all things like that if they're more consistently available that would really help your analytics yeah i, I mean i think the things being consistently available is is the key thing um you know, we do get pockets of of great data from from our partners from um you know our our play out uh vendor platforms uh partners um i will say that uh something that in addition to day parting data that we are looking at more is um returning viewers um we're starting to see that um come into play um yeah. so that's something that uh would be, uh, I think, very interesting. And it leads, you know, everything that, there are different ways to to track engagement, right? And everything that we're talking about is related to engagement in, in some way. And that's that's the key thing, especially on the, you know, content distributor side, we have the most control over the, the schedules, over, over, you know, the creation of the channel. So um, those kinds of metrics that are, that feed into engagement and watch time um, and those kinds of habits are, are what is, um, so, uh, so key for us. Yeah, and uh, we actually have a question coming over from uh, from Mark at WPT, asking, uh, "Do you use?" And essentially, gets kind of like into. So you look at the social video platforms. Obviously, those are a bit different story, right? I mean, they're metric rich, incredibly metric rich platforms. So his question is, "Do you use data from social platforms to help in, inform your curation programming decisions?" You know, on fast, and I'll broaden that even. I mean, do you use data from other you know, non-fast things to 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 do that to do that curation, other than sort of just editorial stance. Sure, I mean, uh, when it comes to you know social platforms, what we definitely look at, and and again, I keep saying it goes back to this, but with our platform partners, recognizing what they are looking to support, what they're looking to feature, and then of course the the traction that that they get from their social um, support. Um, so that is something that that we 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 look at. Um, we uh, also just look at just general market data uh, in terms of how uh, fast is trending. I think I think the latest stat that I've seen at least is that we're up to 111 million fast viewers in, in, in the US. And uh, we like to look at that macro view to, I guess, you know, really more inform our, our overall just D2C and uh, strategy. And that's, that's where that, you know, those kinds of things come into play more at, at a macro level. Yeah. So yeah, so you're still seeing you're know, still seeing growth and everything. Obviously, uh, you know that, that's coming out. And actually, there's another related question around that that's that's come in, which is asking about you know uh, whether fast is growing, but you know, that's the case. Um, I guess the question here uh, was actually a little more about tactics. What's the most successful strategy to to boost viewership around uh, around channels? Is it marketing your own marketing? Is it working with the platforms, or is it just uh, programming, you know, changing your programming? Uh, it's a combination of all those. Um, I, I will say, again, this is all generally speaking, because it's going to vary by channel, it's going to vary it's by, by yeah. platform, yeah. but um, a lot of the the metrics that, and the analytics that we look at point to towards marathoning, marathoning certain series, um, you know, on certain days, like doing a whole block of a, of a certain of certain brand that you know, has led to to some great success and great increase in viewership, you know, uh, when when uh, it, it hits. The thing that uh, is key, of course, is understanding where what platforms that had the most traction, what kind of support 
did we do uh, around that to ensure that, you know, our audience uh, knows that 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 kind of stunt was happening. But I think it just feeds into a, uh, you know, just the larger trend around FASTA, just catering to a lean back experience and and knowing, you know, exactly what you get uh, or what you, you know, see what what is being featured is, is what you get. So I think that's um, that's something that's, uh, you know, the data analytics to inform the programming um, has been very helpful in, in in terms of ensuring, you know, that our numbers are are you know, increasing. Sure. So that that's probably the I mean, is that kind of the primary thing that the data analytics for ultimately it's it's at the the programming and making those decisions. I mean, data analytics, yeah, uh, for sure. I mean, of course, it, as mentioned before, it, it helps else, with our yeah. promotional strategy. It helps with our distribution strategy. But um, out of the thing that we control the most directly is the schedule. Right. So, right. <laughs> so day in day out, it's 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 what the schedulers need to to yeah. be able to, to do their jobs. Really, uh, let's take a little uh, you know uh, and slant about uh, uh, kind of the last uh, topic that I had, which is. There have been uh, one of the things about fast is, uh, you know, it's it's, you know, it's linear television and in the traditional linear television, um, a programmer has visibility into how it's com how competitive channels are doing at a, at a great detail through whatever the currency source is in that particular uh, territory, be it be it Nielsen, uh, you know, be it any, you know, uh, any of the others in paying upon the, the, the country, media metry in France, since the Olympics are going on um, and uh, and other sources. That doesn't exist, of course, in uh, in fast right now. There, there is no um, common source of shared consumption data across uh, you know different uh, different channels beyond some estimates or a few things that people publish. But it's not it's not consistent. Is that a useful thing? Is it useful to have uh, transparency to some degree into competitive channels or at least you know, others in your genre or? Or, or or category and how would you use it? I think so. I I, I would say that it, it's difficult because the nature of the fast market. We're up to nineteen hundred channels. I think is also one of the the latest stats and nineteen hundred plus channels. But they're not all distributed the same way. They're not on all the same platforms. And having the not having the the context around that the the standardization of. Um, what is actually live where and how that, of course, would impact, uh, you know, HOV metrics. I think that's something that uh, it would be, you know, is a challenge. So I, I, I'm, I would, I do would say though that we owe it to ourselves, we owe it to the industry, to advertisers, to create something that can be uh, standardized, that can be shown as, uh, you know, this is actually the audience reach that that we're getting. Um, so rather than you know looking at it from a just a competitive angle, I, I would say just looking at the market data and yes, finding a way that shows the strength of these channels and 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 audience and having that standardized with that contextual placement um, is is something that is I hopefully, you know, as an industry, we are working towards. Yeah. And would you say that that's something potentially that, uh, you know, if, if, if that were you know, in place in a way, it's 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 got the holistic effect of giving advertisers a bit more confidence in uh, you know in fast and CTV in general because they they understand it better. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, because it is an interesting contrast between you know sort of fast and uh, linear television where you know advertisers feel they understand that to the T, you know, to to right. to, to the nth level of detail, but that's just not the that's just not the case. Okay. Um, if there are, are there any, I think we've covered all the questions that have been submitted. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, I would just, uh, you know, ask you to, you know, since we're getting towards the end of our time here, just to kind of round things up and just ask you to put your, you know, kind of crystal ball on and where, <laughs> where do you see, where do you see fast going? Where do you see analytics in, in fast going, say over the next and horizon years, let's say one year, because nobody yep. can look much yep. further than that. You know what? What's uh, what? What right. do you think is gonna? What do you think is gonna happen? And just your yeah. opinion. I, my opinion is that I think because it is such a collaborative, uh, uh, the collaboration between the partners, between the platforms, and 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 the content distributors is, is so key. I do feel that we are moving towards a world where there is more uh, transparency. There's more standardized data, so that we can ensure that we are you know, doing everything that we can to in, improve viewership, to uh, ensure, you know, that we are uh, 
evolving our, our content strategy towards consumer behavior, towards consumer preferences. So I think um, with the understanding that, you know, everything is an indicator, nothing's an absolute, it's a 24 seven evolving market, um, that that kind of uh, partnership I, I see as becoming even increasingly important um, in, in the years ahead. Yeah. And so is it here to stay at least for the next few years? Yes. And I think it's going to keep evolving. And uh, we've been doing a lot of work at just optimizing the strength of our existing channels and, and you know, ensuring that we are, uh, you know, we've got content that's fresh from the UK that, that we're programming on on the channels and we're, we're exploring different things, different brands. And I think um, there's a lot of a lot of um, fun exploration in that, um, that that's still ahead of us. Terrific. Well, I want to uh, thank you, Nick. Uh, this has been a lot of fun, actually. And I think we've covered a lot of, uh, you know, interesting ground. And uh, and I want to also thank our, our audience. Um, uh, you guys have uh, actually given us a lot of really great questions. Uh, so really appreciate, you know, really appreciate all of those and uh, for, for hanging around, uh, you know, through this. Um, so uh, so that concludes our, our, uh, our little peek here into Fast Analytics. Certainly, if you want any more information, feel free to reach out to me at Wit Media. Happy to do that. So, Nick, thank you very much. Thank you so much. And to uh, the OTTX, thank you so much for the opportunity to speak. Great. Right. Take care. Take care.